are going to work today with a little bit of language because I know you guys are studying something in particular in relation to history. Um, and so we're going to build a little bit of background, um, tap your, your prior knowledge, the stuff that you already know, in order to make what you're going to learn through reading and writing, a, a little more understandable. Maybe we want to make it more comprehensible. So our target is this. We're going to use some vocabulary. We're going to use your background knowledge in order to help you understand some things you're going to be reading and write about when it comes to history. So we are going to start right here. We have a goal for our lesson, and we have about 45 minutes together today. Um, our target, your target, is this. Um, in preparation for the reading that you're going to do in history, the learner will we're all learners here, right? The learner will work collaboratively and use vocabulary orally to formulate predictions about the text. To formulate predictions about the text. Now, one of the things that I'm going to ask of you guys today, aside from like active participation, I'm going to ask you to move some things around. I'm going to ask you sometimes to jot some ideas down. But one thing most importantly that I'm going to ask you to do today is I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of talking. So what I want you to do first is I want you to turn to the person next to you. If you have four partners there, turn to the person next to you. If you have just like two or three, then I just want you to turn with whoever's at your table. And I want you to explain to your partner what do you think it means to work collaboratively? What does it mean to use vocabulary orally? And what's your goal? So turn and talk. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. What do you think we're doing today based upon our, our learning target, our learning objective there? <laughs> What do you think? I heard that you understand what it means to work collaboratively. Right? It means to work together. It means to come together and achieve a common goal. You got that down. And then I heard people talking about using vocabulary correctly. And absolutely, every time we want to use vocabulary, we want to try to use it to our best ability. Right? But there was a word right behind it. Right? We use vocabulary orally. And in several groups, we talked about how orally means you're doing it out loud. Right? If you're doing something orally, you're doing it out loud. And we are using collaborative work, and we're using vocabulary, what's that word? Orally. We're using vocabulary orally in order to accomplish this. What does it mean to formulate predictions? To make? Yes. To make, to guess. To, so, we're, so we're making predictions. We're using our best guess based upon clues. You're absolutely right. So that is our big target today. Um, in order to get to that big target, we're going to have to think of some content. We're going to have to think about what you know, and we're going to think about also some of the stuff that you've encountered in, in history. So what I want you to do with me is I want you to read the words up here. So I'm going to give you just a second to scan those words, because you're going to read those out loud, and you don't have to use necessarily a really loud, boisterous voice, <laughs> but I do want you to be able to at least whisper them aloud. Whisper them aloud. Thank you. You guys did a great job reading those words aloud. I want you to turn and share your partner. Is there a word on here that maybe might be a little confusing and might have you a little perplexed, like you're not sure? What does that word mean? I want you to turn and share with your partner one word that you think might be a little confusing. Turn and talk. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. Rugged. Rugged. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah rugged. What do you think it means to... to Rugged. Ah, I'm hearing like a word again and again and again. I've heard it three different tables. Um, I want you to say this word one more time. Rugged. rugged. And when we're talking about rugged in the context of history, um, I want you to be thinking about like somebody taking a really long journey. And they describe the journey as being along really rugged terrain. Really rugged terrain. Like rough. Rough, like really rough, like not a smooth path, right? It's, I heard you say, like kind of like ripped, like torn. You know when something is torn, it's not really nice and smooth and even? When we're talking about rugged terrain, we're talking about something that might be really rough and really bumpy and really unpredictable, right? It's not a smooth road. So I really like the fact that you guys are thinking about the words that you're going to encounter here. Um, any, um, any other words that you found confusing or perplexing? Hazardous. 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 Turn and share with your partner, what do you think the word hazardous means? Is there a part of that word that you know? Um, are there other words in there that you feel like, oh, I'm not sure if I have a real good handle on what this word means? Oregon country. Oh, Oregon country. Say that out loud. Oregon country. Is that a term that you've heard before? Is that a term that you've heard before? It's a place. It does not sound like a place. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of a hint as to what Oregon country means. 
because you're going to learn and read about it a little bit more. So before Oregon was part of the United States, before Oregon was part of the United States, it was its own place on the map. So they didn't call Oregon a state. Instead, they called it country. Oregon country. It didn't belong to the United States. In fact, it didn't really belong to anybody. But lots of people were interested in laying claim there. Lots of people were interested in laying claim there. Um, any other words here that you think, hmm, I'm not quite sure what that means? You guys have um, some materials in front of you. And I'm going to ask that you use these materials in a certain way. So one thing that you'll have in front of you, and I'll ask you to pull it out in just a minute, it is a chart that's on a green piece of paper. It's at the top of your stack there in the center. And on that chart, you see some headings. I want you to read those headings for me. Who, where, where or when, what, what why. and why or how. So each of those headings represents a category. And what I'm going to ask you to do with your group those words that you read aloud just a minute ago, British, Oregon country, Americans, journey, all of those words there, I'm going to ask you to work collaboratively. You're going to work together. And you're going to sort those words into the place on the chart that you believe they belong. There might be some terms there that you say, hmm, that could go here, or it could go here, or maybe it could go there. I want you to work together to defend why you think it belongs under a certain category. Are you following me? You're going to take those words, you're going to categorize them. So for example, if I picked up the word Americans, I know that it probably belongs on the who part of the chart. If I picked up 1800s, because it's a time period, it's a, it's a series of years, I'm thinking, well, you know what, that probably tells me when. So I'll take that slip and I'll move it to the chart. Right? But here's the task. I don't want one person to take the chart and take charge. I want you guys to take turns. So each of you is going to take turns manipulating these little strips and you're going to put them onto your chart. You guys following me? So turn and tell your partner, what are you going to do with these strips on that green chart? Turn and tell them. You have 15 seconds. What are you going to do with these blue strips on that green chart? <laughs> What's your job today? Yeah, are you just gonna drop them on? Like, gonna put them in the right column. Put them in the correct column, right? You're gonna sort. And you're gonna. Uh, you're gonna have some conversations about it. Perfect. So go ahead and flip your words upside down if they're if they're face down. Go ahead and flip them up so that you can see the words in front of you. And we read all of these words together. Right, I asked you to whisper read out loud. We did that quarrelly. So now your task is this. I want you to take turns going around your table and you guys decide who goes first. You're going to take turns going around your table. You're going to read the word aloud. So if I picked up this strip, I'm going to say exploration. And then I'm going to talk to my table team and decide where that word goes on my chart. I'm going to decide where that word goes on my chart. So I want there to be some talking before you place that word down. Got it? Okay, you have about five minutes to get started. Go ahead now. I'm going to ask you to leave that one to the side. Leave that one to the side. We'll come back to that because I think there's going to be more people that have questions on that one. Okay? Yeah? Journey twice. You got which one? Journey. You have journey twice. Ooh, that means it belongs somewhere. Oh, you know what? I wonder if everybody got journey and tell your partners why you're. That's a place. We're doing it wrong, man. What makes you think you're doing it wrong? It looks like you're doing it right. Looks like you're doing it right. Great thinking. Keep going. What do you got there? Control. Right? So your job is this. I want you to take the words from that chart. I don't necessarily want you to remove the words from the chart, unless it helps you think. I want you to take the words from the chart and I want you now to build some sentences that seem to make sense. So I might say something like, the British wanted to journey to Oregon country in order to access, I don't know, maybe like the Pacific Ocean. I want you to take those words and piece them together to formulate sentences that you think might reflect ideas 
from Manifest Destiny. So I want you to work on it around your table starting now. I'm going to give you five minutes. So I want you to say those sentences aloud to your partners. What do you got? Oh, flip it upside down. What do you got? Say it. Yeah. Americans in the United States. I don't know, but it could be a concept, right? To journey across the Oregon country because of the rugged to trade. Because oh. it's all sea. Oh, it's all sea, so it might be hazardous because you have. What I want you to do is I want you to think about one of the sentences that you guys can share aloud. So I'm going to come around to each group. You're going to share one sentence aloud, one concept, one idea. I'm going to give you one more minute to decide amongst your team what's that one idea and who's going to share it aloud. I'm going to give you one minute starting now. British journey to Oregon country in the 1800s. British journey to the Oregon country in 1800s. That might be an idea that you're going to, be, that you're going to read about when you read about Manifest Destiny. Great thing. You can give them one big clap. <coughs> All right, one more time. One big clap. Nice job. How about over here? Americans in the 1800s controlled British territories. Ah, you're saying Americans in the 1800s controlled British territories. Maybe true. Let's give them one big clap. So what I want you to do next is I want you guys to work together, and I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes. I want you to work together to make some predictions. Based upon all of the sentences you constructed with the vocabulary from the text, and based upon what your, your colleagues at your tables constructed, and based upon what you heard around the room, what might you predict that you could learn when you read about Manifest Destiny? So maybe you can say references to rugged terrain and control and territory lead me to believe that I'm going to be learning about the Manifest Destiny and how different groups fought to control space. Or, you might say, after discussing Britain and Americans fighting for control, I predict dot, dot, dot. So I want you to work together in your table groups. I want you to come up with just a few predictions. What might you learn in this text about Manifest Destiny? Your time starts now. You have three minutes. Why might families move? Maybe we haven't had the experience, but I'm thinking, like, why might they move? Turn and buddy buzz to your partner. You have 15 seconds. Just one reason to your partner. What's one reason why families might decide to relocate? Might, why might they move? More money. More money? Right? Because you're absolutely right. Like today, we'd say, oh, you'd for a better job. And you're saying, in the 1800s, it wasn't so much about jobs, but it was about, like, face lots of challenges. Um, when they decided to begin journeys to faraway places, buddy buzz, what might be one challenge they would face if they had to journey to a faraway place? 15 seconds, turn and talk, one person, right? One person right next to you, quick buddy buzz. What's a challenge they might face when they're tr moving to another place? What are some challenges people have to face along when deciding to move in? Begin journeys to money problems, right? Maybe they didn't have enough. They didn't have enough families. money for gas to move. Did they have gas though back then? Nope. Sometimes those things like the, the threat of bandits or the threat of illness or the threat of danger on the road um, might be a reason to say, oh no, that's too dangerous. We're not going to try it. But instead, people who went on this journey to Oregon country felt like, <coughs> hey, the danger is worth the risk because our reasons for moving are so important. So I want you to think about what might be some reasons that the hazards of a long journey to an unknown place might outweigh the risks. In which cases, might it be worth it to move even if it was risky? Turn and tell your partner you have 15 seconds. When might it be really important even if it was risky? You guys did a really, really nice job and I think you're, you're maybe feeling a little more confident as you go into your reading. Um, we asked you to do this today. We asked you to work collaboratively and use vocabulary orally to formulate predictions about what you're going to learn in your reading. So what I want you to turn and tell your partner is answer number one. What objective did you accomplish? Like what were you able to do with your partners today? You have 30 seconds. Turn and talk. Collaborate. You were able to collaborate to do what? <laughs> talk about history. Talk about history. 